Hey guys, how's it going? In today's video, I'm going to show you just how easy it is to install a light bar or spotlights. Don't worry, I'll run through all the wiring and show you that it's really not that complicated. Alright, let's get to it. First thing I'm going to show you is the relay itself. That's the relay holder, and that's the relay that comes on and off like that. That's all it is. Now, what I'll do, I'll open this up so I can show you exactly what's inside and how it all works. So that you understand each wire and what it does. All right, let's have a look. Now, the easiest way to explain this a relay is actually a switch. So you actually have your power from your lights coming from your battery in here and then out again through here and going to your light. But to be able to switch it, it needs a positive and a negative to be able to switch the switch inside the relay. So you have your negative coming out here and your positive coming out here. This positive runs along, goes to your switch in your dash now your switch comes back along this red wire here and plugs straight into your high beam. And that's how, it, when it picks up a signal for the high beam, it will send a signal through here, through here. And because that's earth to the body, this side here, that will trip that relay and it will turn it on and allow the power to run through to your light. Now, that's fine with most cars, but some older cars, like my, my Hilux and this Kluger I'm working on today, they're what's called negative switching. So you can't pick up positive signal from the headlight itself. I'll explain why in a minute. But what we're gonna to do to avoid that, this one here, you would normally earth to the body. Now, they've made them pretty easy these days. Simply unconnect that one, because that's normally your earth. And what you do, you grab this red wire here, and connect that straight to the white. And now what that is doing, because you've got your positive going in here, that's joint onto that, it's sending the positive through here. So now rather than having a negative, that's sending a positive signal through here as well. So like I said, normally you've got your positive through here as well. So that means you've got two positives at the moment. So that's not going to trip it. I'll go to the car and show you what happens at the car. Now, yeah, easiest way to explain negative switching, put my test light up to the negative on the battery. This is what a standard light would look like. You have a positive signal on one side, and if I just put that on a positive battery there, and test the other side, the light's up green, that's a negative. So you have a positive and a negative. So your red wire on your relay pickup would always hook up to the positive. And now when you turn on your high beams, it's gonna send that signal to the relay and trigger that switch, and it'll turn on the relay and turn on your light. But for negative switching, it's completely different. Here, I've got two red wires. And if I put that back over on the negative there, you'll see I've got a positive there and a positive there. So that's already live. Like, how are you gonna pick up off of that? So let's have a look when I turn the high beams and see what that does. Now that the high beam's on, we'll check it again. Nothing there. And we're positive over there. So there's nothing over there, so let's just put this over on the positive there. And what's actually happened, that same wire that was live a minute ago has turned into an earth. That's what negative switching does. You have multiple wires on your headlights, even if you've got three wires on your headlights, oh, they're all different. Um, several might be live all the time. And when it goes to the particular light that you need, one of the wires will turn from a positive to a negative. So that's what I mean by positive negative switching. Now you see why I don't earth this to the body and run that to the positive on the headlights. If I did that, the switch would always be open and the lights would always be on. So that's why we disconnect that earth from there and connect it to the positive. That way we're running two positives. So a positive into the relay and then a positive out. And then when the high beam switches to the negative on that same wire, that means we've got a positive on one side and the other side is gonna to switch to the negative, which will trigger that relay and it'll work fine. 
So now that I've showed you how all that works, I'll taper this back up and we'll get started. Now you want to mount your relay as close to the battery as you can, allowing you enough room for light wiring to get around to there, and also your switch wiring to run through your firewall and into the car. They never give you much positive and negative lead on here, so that's why I always make sure it's as close to the battery as possible. You never want to extend this wiring um, because the further a fuse away is from the battery, the more chance of it rubbing on something and catching on fire. So you always want the fuse as close to the battery as you can. Now when you can, it's always better to put a bolt and a nut on the relay rather than a tech screw. Tech screws on cars will always come undone, whereas a bolt is never gonna come undone, so you're not gonna have any hassles. Now I won't be using this leftover earth anymore, so I can cut that off and tape that up. Now my headlight pickup wire, that's way too long at the moment, so I'll trim that to what I need, and then I'll connect that to the wire that turns negative when the high beams are on, on this light here. But if you're on a normal car, you connect this straight to the positive on the high beam. As you can see, I spliced back the wire, wrapped my wire around it and soldered it. Never use a scotch lock or any kind of crimp, as they won't last, you'll have nothing but troubles. Now that's all taped up, any exposed wire on your relay, you just want to put a bit of converted tubing on, just feed it under it and cut to length. Um, you don't want it rubbing on anything and causing a fire. Now that the high beam's connected, you've got three wires left. One of them will be positive and negative. So just leave that overhang of the battery for now. One will be your light which if you've got a light bar, you'll just have the one connector. But if you've got spotlights, you have the two connectors. That's the only difference in the looms between spotlights and light bars. So just leave that over there. And then your last one, you're just switching wire. So they give you, that's long enough to run this through the firewall and mount that in your dash to run your switch. Now with your switching wire, you wanna run it along the side of your engine bay. Try to cable tight every 30 centimeters so it doesn't rub on anything until you get to your firewall. You want to find the grommets on your firewall. A lot of them have little nipples. You can cut off the nipple and push straight through. This one doesn't have it. So I've got this little piece of metal here. Feed in here. Tape it up. Put a bit of silicon spray on it and push it through very gently. Be very cautious. There's a lot of wires in here. You want to try and go to the sides of that. If you pinch one of those wires, it's going to be very difficult to fix. Now, once you fed it through the firewall, you want to run it along your dash underneath, come out near your steering wheel. You want to find one of these blank banking plugs, if your card's got one. Pull that, pull that out, run your wiring through it. Cut any excess off. Now, there's multiple plugs available. This one come with this style here, but I was happy with that. There's also your, your little rocker, your toggle switch, but what I'm going with is a proper button. It's going to sit in there neatly and it's going to look very professional. Now you notice there's three wires here. Your red, that's my input straight from the headlight. So that runs straight to the switch here, runs through the switch, back out the blue, and that blue runs straight to the relay that I showed you before as well. And there's a black earth here. If you've got negative switching, never use this black earth. Your lights will not work at all. That's the biggest hassle people have with not, uh, lights not working with negative switching is they connect this earth and, and then it won't work. The only reason you connect this earth is if you do, don't have negative switching, you've just got a normal car. Um, what that does when you earth that to somewhere here, that will illuminate your switch. So you've got a little light on your switch. That's all that does. So if you've got negative switching, do not connect that. Once you get your switch wired up, push it in. Looks really nice in there. Pull your loose wiring through, cable tight down the bottom so it's not gonna come down and get on your foot while you're driving. And then in here's all done. Now normally I'd always mount the light bar to a nudge bar or a bull bar, but as this vehicle doesn't have one, I've had to go for that $20 mount off of eBay. So all you do is if you unscrew your numb plate, put that there, put your numb plate back on there, screw that on, then the light bar bolts straight on top. It's that simple. Uh, only trouble with those mounts, a lot of people have issues because it's only attached to the bumper, it flexes a lot. So as you can see through here, there's a foam absorber and then there's steel impact absorber. So the only way around that is to pull the bumper off, uh, make a custom mount from the impact absorber, 
through your bumper and under this mount. That's the only way you're gonna make it sturdy. But for now, this is gonna be attached straight to the bumper. Now I've got that attached, but as you can see, it is a bit flimsy. So I might put an extra couple of little screws in the bottom just to help hold it a bit more. Next thing you wanna do, feed your light bar wire through your grill. Come out right next to the light and tie up any excess you've got down there once you're finished. Now, one thing I just realised, I've had this King's Light sitting at home for about six months now. I was going to mount it right there, but this light is too wide for this mount. And I just unboxed it and realised it only has the side mounts. It doesn't have slide mounts so that I can fit it in these holes here. So it's my partner's lucky day. I've just ordered a $400 light force light to go in there. So I'm going to have to wait a couple of days now to get that. So we'll finish the video then, and let's test it out. So even though I can't mount the light bar now, we can still finish this final step. So get the positive and negative, connect to your battery here. Now it's all exposed, so I'll put up more convoluted tubing around both of these. Cable tie, tidy up all the wiring, and then it's done. One thing I like to finish off with, with the terminals, once you've got the convoluted tubing on it, just put a bit of heat shrink over the end. And just shrink that up. That way it protects any dust or dirt or anything from getting in, but also makes it easy to determine your positive from your negative, so you're not gonna mix them up. Right, so now we have the light force light bar. The difference with this, not only does it have the side mount option, but it has slide mounts. So these just slide along and I can position them in any of these holes, much easier to mount. I've got it all bolted in now and lined up. Uh, all I've got to do now, pull the wiring back through, cable tight along the grill, and it's all done. Now, you might notice I didn't go into too much detail with the switching wiring, whether regarding the wires in the switch, back of the switch, because every switch you're gonna get is different. Some have three, some have four, some have seven rate pins. They're all different. Um, the free pins are pretty easy. It's just your signal in from your headlight, your output back to your relay and an earth. Um, and the four pins, is usually for four wires. Um, you've got your in, out, illumination to illuminate the switch and an earth. And um, that's pretty much it with the switches. But if you do have any more questions about that, don't hesitate to leave a comment. Um, with regards to the relay, um, the positions of each wire, I'll put it in the description the number of each position on the relay, so that if you have a different relay um, with a different wiring loom, you can still use this as a reference, and they're all pretty much the same, but at least you've got this as a reference. I hope you found this video helpful, guys. If you have any other questions regarding the install, don't hesitate, leave a comment, I'm always happy to answer all questions. Um, if you've liked the video, leave a like. If you haven't already, maybe consider subscribing. But thank you for watching the video, guys, and we'll catch us on the next one. Cheers.